Hello guys, I am Stavros, meteorologist at WeatherXM and in this short video I'm gonna present you our new weather station from the unboxing up to its installation. So let's get started. So we unbox the weather station and we are ready to see one by one its separate parts. So this is the outdoor sensor, which is actually a big plastic cover embracing all the individual sensors. This is the M5 indoor gateway that receives and forwards the data measured by the outdoor sensor to CloudWemp3 infrastructure. Together with the station, you also get a set of U-bolts, nuts and metallic parts to mount the sensor on the metallic mast, a USB cable to power your gateway, an external GPS antenna and a radio frequency antenna which may be used in case the distance between gateway and outdoor sensor is slightly larger than the recommended but we will provide separate instructions for this in another video as it's a bit more complicated. Last, a quick guide in a single page is also included in the box. Getting the general idea about the installation of our weather station we aim to deploy the sensors outside, which send environmental conditions, so all the measurements, wirelessly to M5 gateway, which is indoor, near a window, always connected to the Wi-Fi and USB power. Now let's see in detail the outdoor sensor. On the one side of the sensor, there is a rain gauge consisting of a black cap which collects the rainwater. The rain gauge has a tipping bucket in it, which means that there is a small seesaw within the bucket with a single scoop. Every time the scoop is filled by water, it drops sending a signal that 0.3 mm of precipitation has been recorded. So 0.3 mm is the accuracy of this sensor, which is pretty enough even for scientific works. Under the rain gauge, there is a white radiation shield which includes the sensors of temperature and humidity. As temperature can be significantly affected by the radiation retransmitted by various surfaces around the weather station, the existence of this radiation shield is really important in order to get a right and as representative as possible measurement. So, please keep the radiation shield always clean and airy. The accuracy of the temperature sensor is 0.2 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good, while the humidity sensor may have a deviation of plus or minus 5%. Having such numbers, the actual resulting accuracy of the measurements of your station is really up to you and the way that you will install the outdoor sensor. Now let's move to the middle of the outdoor sensor. There is a small light sensor which detects the light intensity and can provide us with the sun radiation measurements. Next, there is a solar panel which supplies with power a supercapacitor that is the main power source of the weather station. The batteries that we will place later are used only in cases of prolonged dark conditions close to the poles of the Earth or during extended cloud coverage. Please do not forget to use a compass to place the outdoor sensor in such a way that the west direction of this arrow coincides with the west indicated by your compass. Usually there are mobile compass apps that do this job. This bubble here is also a way to understand that our sensor is fully aligned when it is placed on the metallic mast and doesn't have any weird declinations. On the other side, we have the wind gauge which is divided into the wind speed and the wind direction sensor. These caps should be screwed on the top and they measure the speed with which air moves through. The wind speed sensor comes with a quite typical deviation of a 10% which means a possible error of a 1 to 3 meters per second, which again is pretty good. And this wind vane goes at the bottom and is used to identify the direction of the wind. At the bottom of the sensor, you will see a reception for the metallic mast, which can allow an up to 5 cm diameter mast. The U-bolts can help you fix a mast of a slightly smaller diameter, but it's not a good idea to try and fix a 1 or 2 cm diameter pole here. And the very last thing about the sensor is the battery compartment. We need two AA batteries. Never use any rechargeable batteries as they last for a shorter period 
and they do not recharge within the outdoor sensor. If you live in a sunny place, alkaline batteries will do. If you are worried about having to replace the batteries once every few years, you could use lithium long-life batteries. Of a moderate climate, such batteries may last for two or more years. However, if you use this weather station in a really cold place, where temperature stays below freezing level for long periods, the battery life may last less than two years. This is actually the heart of your weather station. This fancy little box receives all the data from the outdoor sensor in a wireless way and retransmits them through the internet to WeatherXM server and other Web3 cloud infrastructure. Notice that the M5 consists of various stacks, the blue which contains the LoRa chipset used for the communication with the outdoor sensor and the grey stack which contains the chipset that is responsible for the reception of the GPS signal. Both these stacks have a port for using an external antenna if needed. And there is also a USB Type-C port for power supply. The M5 needs to be in permanent power supply as the rechargeable battery that includes will only last for a few hours, thus it is actually useful only for debugging or trying out locations for better receival. Getting started, we firstly turn the M5 gateway on pressing this button. Anytime we want to just make a restart, we press this button on the bottom. Once we turn the M5 on, we will see these three red icons at the top right corner. Let's make them green. Firstly, we swipe the screen left. We can change the time zone to the one that our region belongs to. Then we press configure Wi-Fi and we follow the instructions using our mobile phone, tablet or laptop. Once the M5 is connected to the internet, the Wi-Fi icon will turn green. And usually, in a few moments, you will see also the left icon turn green as well, which means that the M5 gateway communicates with the WeatherXM servers. Secondly, we connect the external GPS antenna, then we move outside the house for a while in order to quickly get an initial signal. If we swipe right, we should see in a few minutes values at latitude, longitude and altitude, while the such indication shows how many satellites are visible from the point that our M5 stands. Near 10 satellites is a good signal. Then we move our M5 in the house next to a window so that it has an almost direct contact with the sky. Once we get a GPS fix, we can swipe right the screen and notice that the middle icon on the status bar has turned green. Finally, we just put alkaline batteries on the outdoor sensor and we will firstly see this small red LED light flashing every 16 seconds, which implies that the sensor transmits the data. So in a few seconds, we should see temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, wind, rain and UV values appearing on our screen. In addition, you will get the ID number of your outdoor sensor at the middle top of your screen. It is always a good practice to do this process having the M5 gateway and the sensor close together to assure that they are able to communicate. Next step is to install the outdoor sensor outside the house. Let's go! So we've just installed our outdoor sensor outside. In my case, I chose the terrace of my block apartment. And as you can see, I tried to place it as far as I could from other high obstacles around that could make wind and rain gauges to measure in a faulty way. And of course, I mounted on a two meter metallic mast in order to avoid measuring high temperatures, especially during the day. Hopefully, my M5 gateway in the house will now get the measurements. We got back into the house. If we still have values on our M5 screen, that means that we've done everything right. As an advice, just keep an eye for a few minutes to make sure that measurements are refreshing. Typically, wind speed and direction could change every time that the sensor transmits a new data package. That is 16 seconds, as we said before.
if you experience problems with the communication between the outdoor sensor and the M5 gateway, one, try to get them as closer as you can, two, avoid metallic obstacles and thick walls between them, keep the distance between them as clear as you can. If you live in a block apartment and there are several floors between the M5 and the sensor, then you may have communication problems. And of course, it is always important that the final place you will find for your outdoor sensor is in agreement with the guidelines recommended in our M5 instruction manual. After finishing with the installation of your weather station, it's time to use our app. After downloading the WeatherXM app, you create an account and then you sign in. Your task here is to add claim your device, so press the plus button and follow the instructions. When you're asked for the device serial number, just insert the number you will get when swiping right the M5 screen. If your GPS antenna gets a signal, your right position will appear on the map. Finally, you press claim and hopefully you will get a success message. If you get an error, please check your internet connection and the GPS signal as well. After a successful process, you will be able to get all the weather data on your phone and many more. As this is an ongoing process, you will gradually see more features in your app like special graphs, statistics and weather forecasts. That's all guys, now it's time to collect weather data and have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video, you find it useful and it addressed most of your questions. If not, please feel free to leave a comment under the video asking your question. So stay tuned at WeatherXM and see you soon. Bye-bye.